Hi, and welcome to Cryptobiography. I'm your host, Brandon Starr. This is episode 371 of Cryptobiography, and it's part nine of The Orb Warmer. And here we go. She decided she had to try. Melissa did not get back to her about her writing. However, she did eventually send Susan an invitation to a midwinter dinner party. Susan only had the one nice outfit, the one Melissa had herself bought her. She wore it to the party. And she brought her stone, warmed but well-wrapped so it did not show any glow, in her pocket. The antisocial driver picked her up once again, and she went to her Melissa's house again. She entered the party without fanfare this time, but didn't know where Melissa was. The dinner was actually started before she saw Melissa. Susan had a place card near one end of the table, and it turned out that on one side there was a child of about eight who didn't look at Susan after a single glance, and on the other side was an old woman who said nothing, but stared at Susan as though she was trying to burn an ant with a magnifying glass. So she said nothing. But about the time of the first the food was being served, Melissa burst into the room. Hello, all, so nice to have you here, Melissa said. She swayed a bit, then steadied herself on the back of the chair of an older man Susan did not know. I'm a little late. Let's have fun and eat. Weird, Susan thought. She didn't say, sorry, I'm a little late. Just, I'm a little late. As though a statement of fact was the same as an apology. She even said it in the same tone one might use. But then, perhaps an apology wasn't really necessary. After all, this was her party, and the meal hadn't been seriously delayed. Melissa went around to everyone at the table, briefly saying hi. She winked at Susan, which made her feel a little better, though she sat at nearly the furthest point away from her. So, Susan had a quiet meal, taking in the talk of the people around, but not having the chance to say much of anything. The dinner wound down, and the food had been excellent. It had concluded with chocolate mousse, something Susan had only had one time before, and loved it then, and this one was even better. The flavor was strong and rich, and yet the texture was so airy it nearly disappeared in her mouth. Susan wasn't sure what the plan was, or why Melissa had even invited her. She had stayed on the other side of the massive table, and so they hadn't said a thing to each other. The guests finally started leaving, and the party dwindled to nothing. Melissa still said nothing to Susan, and so Susan was getting up to leave when Melissa came over to her. Hey, friend, she said. Susan had noticed Melissa drinking throughout her meal and suspected she was more than a little tipsy. We haven't had a chance to talk yet. Let me get the last few people home, and we can chat. Melissa saw off the last few groups of people, then came back to Susan. So let's find a spot to talk. They went upstairs, and Melissa led Susan to a gorgeous sweeping balcony with many comfortable chairs and a sweeping view of the valley. They sat for a moment, and Melissa seemed to be thinking a bit, so Susan said nothing. Finally, Melissa said, Oh, yes, you're writing. I'm sorry, I haven't read much yet. I got a little done the first day when they came, but since then I've been very, very busy. A servant came and put a tray down on the little table between their chairs. It had a couple of orange drinks. Negronis, Melissa said, picking one up. Try it. Susan did so. She took a sip. She couldn't place the flavors, and there seemed to be several of them, but it was delicious. I love it, she said. My favorite last drink of the night drink, Melissa said. She was already almost halfway through hers. Susan took a good swallow. There seemed to be a bit of citrus in it and some other spice-type flavors as well. She also thought she could taste gin, which she had tried once or twice. In any case, it was refreshing. And the alcohol was warming up her vocal cords. Oh, that's fine about the stories, she said. I have a bit of news. Oh? Melissa said casually between sips, clearly not expecting anything earth-shattering. Yes, I can do magic, a little like you. Melissa put her drink down. Really? Really? Well, that's great, Melissa said, her face split into the biggest grin Susan had seen her give. We can get you out of your apartment, get you some real money, and hell, you can help your parents out too. Susan was a little taken aback. She didn't know how Melissa was quite so up-to-date on her living arrangements. 
Uh, yes, well, uh, that would be fine, she said, not knowing exactly what Melissa was looking for. Let's see it. I've got some orbs. I always keep a few on hand, in case I want to try my hand at anything new or practice up on something I haven't done for a while. I'll ask them to get you one. Don't worry, Susan said. I'm all set. Really? M Melissa said. She seemed to look around Susan's person. There really wasn't anywhere she could keep a glass orb, which was considerably larger than her stone. Fine, bring it out. Let's see this talent of yours. Susan brought forth her stone. As soon as she saw what, what was glowing, Melissa seemed to instantly sober up. Put it away, she hissed. She stood up, went to the several doors that opened on the balcony and closed them all. Then she turned to Susan. Where did you get that? I made it, Susan said. Do you know how dangerous this is? Melissa said, still whispering in a way that sounded like her earlier hiss. Now Susan was scared. No, she admitted. Uh, Melissa said and rolled her eyes. Well, my friend, you've gone and stepped right in it now. This is bad. This is very bad. What do you mean bad? This is great, Susan said a little defiantly. Melissa just looked at her. What? Susan asked. And that's where we're stopping the story for this week. If you have any comments or questions about this episode or previous episodes, cryptobiography at gmail.com or hit us up on Facebook or Twitter or X uh, or our Mastodon. And thanks for listening. Words of Music Copyright 2024, Brandon Starr, All Rights Reserved. Characters and events are fictional, fictionalized, or satirical.